Hey everyone, welcome to Marvel's YouTube channel. My name is Will Sliney and I'm going to teach you how to draw Captain America. For those of you who were here last week, we drew Iron Man. Uh, and I'm going to use the same principles that I used then to draw Captain America as well. We'll break it down into very, very simple shapes. We'll build it up layer by layer. And basically, we're going to make it as simple as possible for any of you to be able to draw him. So just to show you right here. So last week, this is how we approached Iron Man. We broke him down into a simple stick figure. We built up the, the shapes by blocking out the different forms of anatomy and figuring out how the actual figure is going to shape out. And then we were able to build up Tony's armor on top of that. We'll be able to do the same thing today with Captain America, only this time it's obviously a little bit different because he's not wearing a suit of armor. But we'll apply that same method with the armor that we will do with, with, uh, with Steve Rogers' uh, anatomy. So it should be good fun. I'm really looking forward to doing this with everyone. Please feel free to ask questions uh, in the live chat, in the comments, of course. And I, I love uh, interacting with the community. That's always, you know, the best part of doing some of these live. Uh, and we'll, we'll go through it. We'll break down everything that we can all the ways along the way. So let's get straight into drawing. All right, let's say goodbye to these drawings. And let's start off right now. So like last week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down into very, very, very simple shapes. Don't be frustrated if you find that I'm going a little bit too fast. You know, the beauty about doing these on streams is that you'll be able to replay these. You'll even be able to replay them at a slower speed if you want to. I've got an hour here, so I'm going to try and get through the whole figure. Um, but remember, you can play it back at your own speed. And if you find something difficult, the key to drawing is that always practice, 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 and you will get better. Okay? All right, so simple stick figure. Let's start with a little oval for the head. Let's do some lines for the shoulders and for the hips. And we're finding out our pose with a simple stick figure. And the reason why we use a stick figure to do this is because it's really, really simple to draw, yet this is probably one of the most important parts of when you're drawing any comic book character. You know, you want to look your, you want your character to be in a really, really cool pose. So normally when I'm doing something for comics, you know, I'll figure out a couple of different poses. Some will work, some won't. And that's why at this stage with the stick figures, I can build it up and I can, or I can draw multiple versions of these and it doesn't take too much time. And what we can do now is we can build up on top of that, okay? So, like last week, we'll start blocking out the anatomy on top of this. We know that we can start piecing in bits of the figure on top of it, like here. So we'll start with the chest. We'll do the shoulders. For some reason, I always like to start with the chest and the shoulders. It doesn't matter what you want, where you want to start, but that's my own personal preference. I block in some cylinders for the arms. Okay, now these cylinders are quite key to keeping a bit of momentum with my figure shape. So this is your typical cylinder like this, but I'm making sure that I add a little bit of movement on both sides of the cylinder to keep things nice and dynamic and keep a lot of movement in our figure. That's really important when you're drawing your Marvel superheroes and try to have the directions going in the set going the same way for each different cylinder okay it adds a nice little flow to our figure and then it'll follow all the ways through down around the arm like this okay so we'll do the same down here for the legs two cylinders bow curving in the same direction same here for the lower leg cylinders again here for the upper leg like this and for the lower leg now all of these are going to be erased if you're drawing on a pencil and paper you know you lightly draw it with pencil you'll erase this before or when you're doing your inks on a computer of course I just have layers I can turn them on and off which is quite handy it's a little bit of a time saver but really even though I am drawing digitally here it doesn't matter what you're drawing on. 
they're all just tools. All that's important is your practice and the amount of time that you put into, into your work. Okay, I'm gonna focus on some certain parts here that we weren't able to do with, with Iron Man. The main one being, of course, is his face. You know, Tony Stark was wearing a mask the last time. This time for Steve Rogers, we can see a lot more of his facial figures. So I need to block out the face in the same way that I blocked out the figure so I can figure out where the different parts of the anatomy go. So I'll often draw a line down where I want the center of the face to go. And then I start to treat it like different planes of the face. So a good trick to do this is to imagine the face like a skull, because the skull really is the face with the important planes only. And by doing that, by finding these different planes, I'm able to generally rough out the area of the face much, much easier without getting bogged down with little, little details that I'll, get, that I'll be doing later on. And there we go. Step number two. Don't be afraid if you make mistakes. We all make mistakes when we draw. And don't be afraid to erase them. Okay, so some questions. So what books have I worked on? Well, I have worked on mainly Star Wars for the last little while. I worked on The Rise of Kylo Ren most recently. That's just been solicited to come out at the end of July, which is awesome, the collected version of it. Um, I worked on Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I worked on the Fearless Defenders. I worked on a bunch of Spider-Man uh, Spider uh, comics. But I also got to redesign the Avengers of 2099. And of course, I got to redesign Captain America and create a new Captain America, which was really, really cool. And I wanted to keep a lot of the core elements in that Captain America costume, which, was, which will always pass through from character to character, yet create something new as well. So that was a real nice highlight of my career, actually. And don't be afraid to keep on sending in the questions, as always. Okay, so we've two layers done. Let's lightly erase what we have here. And let's start building up more layers now. So we want to start fleshing out the anatomy on top of this. Start really figuring out where the different parts of the anatomy go, okay? So I'm going to focus in and start working on the chest muscles. Again, for some reason, it's a kind of a... It's a part of the figure that I always start with for some reason. Uh, I'll draw this in red actually, just so you will be able to, just so you'll be able to see it a lot clearer, okay? Now anatomy, like this might sound crazy to you, but my favorite thing about anatomy is that you'll never ever master it. You know, you had, the likes of Leonardo and Michelangelo back in the Renaissance days just studying this for their entire lives. And that's really, really cool, you know? It's a challenge with, that gives you something to learn all of the time. And I really believe that's a gift. It's one of my favorite things about drawing is that there's always something to learn and no more so than with human anatomy. Believe you me, I have drawn the human figure, you know, probably hundreds of thousands of times if you really, really think about it. And there's always something new to learn because it can twist and turn into so many different shapes and sizes and proportions. And then, of course, you have different proportions for different people. There's always so much to learn. But that's a good thing. I'm just going to lighten this color a little bit just so you can see a little clearer. You know, that's a good thing. It keeps it fun, it keeps it interesting, and that's why I love this job so much, is every day is a challenge, every day is something new to learn. It's never boring. So th the reason why I'm saying this is I wanna encourage you not to get frustrated when you're drawing human anatomy, especially when you're starting out, because it's a crazy, crazy task to do. The best advice I can give you is don't be afraid to look at reference. You know, life drawing is one of the best ways to learn. And if you sit down and if you're drawing a friend of yours or if you draw something, you find some, you know, even photographs on the computer or something like that when you're studying anatomy, you're building up your resources of anatomy in your head. You start to figure out how all the muscles kind of interlock and how they work with each other. And it's a key part of drawing superheroes. You want to know the figure that's underneath the costume before you put the costume on top of that. This solid base will really, really help you. 
Okay. All right, more questions. What was it like working on Spider-Man for so long? Well, it was cool. You know, I worked on so many different Spider-Man characters. Uh, I worked on Superior Spider-Man. It then went on to, you know, Peter Parker, Amazing Spider-Man. I worked on uh, Spider-Man 2099, of course. I worked on his son. Uh, I can't remember what year he's from. Uh, off the top of my head, I worked on uh, Scarlet Spider, both Scarlet Spiders. You know, I pretty much got to draw them all, which was amazing. But it was so cool to get to do such a long run. And Peter David was the writer for that. And he became a good friend over the course of working on it, which was just amazing. So, yeah, I was blessed. More questions. So what's my favorite Marvel character that I have not personally drawn? Hmm. Interesting. I would say, like, does that include covers as well? Like, I've pretty much drawn them all, if you count all of the covers as well. Like, one of the ones that I haven't drawn too much, I think I've only done them in two or three covers, is Wolverine. Uh, I've, you know, there's, actually I remember, I think it was Dan Slott that said this, there's this real nostalgic age from when you're younger, when you're around 12 or 13, that the characters that you loved back then, they'll, re you'll really, really live with, they'll really live with you. And that was the time when I was watching those Spider-Man cartoons, those Wolverine cartoons, or those X-Men cartoons, and I absolutely fell in love with those characters. I remember making fake Wolverine claws and walking to school with them. <laughs> Just little, like, paper ones, of course. So I have such a such a love for him that I'd like to get to draw him a lot more for sure. And it's cool, you know, each character presents a different challenge. Even in like in Star Wars, the books that I'm working on right now, all of the books have had very, very different tones and that comes with different characters as you're working on them. The different feeling, the different vibes to characters you know, they present different challenges, and Wolverine certainly would too. And I've never really done that kind of gritty, I guess, book that you could do with Wolverine. So he'd be a lot of fun for sure. Okay, do I have any tips for drawing humans in a way that looks dynamic? Well, it really, it, it boils down to these. I'm going to take these cylinders again, and I'm going to expand on that here. So the reason why... I have these cylinders going in this direction, like this. You could do your cylinders. I'll just redraw his shoulder here. You know, if I had the cylinders with the curves going in opposite directions like that, it just seems to stunt the flow a little bit. It like, there's all these visual tricks. This seems to like, it's almost like you have this line that comes in and goes boop and stops and off again. Whereas if you have them going in the same direction, it keeps that nice little flow. It's just a small little trick. If you can't push your character's pose that much, you know, Captain America isn't the same as Spider-Man. You don't want him twisting his figure as much as you could with Spidey. You don't want his legs up in the air as much as you would, which, which you know, automatically will give you a kind of a dynamic feel to what you're drawing. But... It's little things like that that can help, and your line weights will help. It'll show movement with the shade and the, the shade and the form, but it's all down to that initial initial pose. And if I really wanted to push this, if we go back a step to this stick figure layer here, there's also relationships between your shoulders and your hips, which are really important when it comes to dynamism as well. So I have a slight tilt here. If you look, I have the upper shoulders on a line like this and I have the lower shoulders on a line like this, and they'll come into the center and they'll meet like this eventually, okay? So they're in slightly different angles, where this one, the, his right shoulder is higher than his left shoulder, whereas his left hip is higher than the right side of his hip. So if you wanna make it more dynamic, you know, you push those lines even further. So let's do that here now. Let's rotate this line as if I drew it more like this. And let's do the same with the hips, okay? So let's rotate them on this line here. And obviously then when I do that, 
I would have to balance his legs so that both are touching the ground. I'm going to keep the hips in the same position. And there you go. That's This on the right here is more of a dynamic pose than what we have in, in Captain America on the left I'm drawing here. But I purposely didn't push him that much because of Captain America's personality. He's more of a stoic character, standing front and center. Whereas if this pose was somebody else... I might have pushed the dynamism, dynamism in this standard pose a little bit more, if that makes sense to you, okay? All right, let's move on. Let's go to, let's start fleshing in the costume on top of this. So this is our anatomy layer. Again, this will all be deleted. If it's pencil and paper, you're still at your pencil stage. The next step here where I put in the costume details is also still your pencil stage. So I'm going to Change this to blue, and then I'm going to create a red layer on top of this where I start drawing in the costume details on top of it, all right? So, it's cap. Let's outline where his mask goes. What would you call that? I suppose the... <laughs> The gap in the front of his mask, his mouthpiece, I suppose. His eye sockets go like this. These correlate to his eyebrows. His eyebrows will be along here. And whenever you see Captain America, it's just about hiding his eyebrows like that. So that's a good way to figure out where those lines go. And if you want to show him angry, you can tilt down these lines like this. If you want to, you know, push some expressions. So... Of course, he's got a big A, front and center. A is quite an easy letter to draw. I know I'm actually, you might think that uh, there's not a lot to, to writing a letter, but there often can be because you want to keep it, you know, you want to make it look right. So you want to have each part of the letter equidistant from the next part, if that makes sense. So there's a lot more to lettering than you might think in the first place. There are some incredible letterers that work in comics, of course, that add in all of, of course, your speech and your, your sound effects. And this is an example of when I have to draw it onto the page. So I'm making sure that all of those lines are equidistant from each other. So it looks like a nice solid A. So let's draw the wings. So we'll start off with two, actually, you won't see this one, it's behind. Two little circles like this. And I find that if you draw the top part of the wing first, the rest of them just follow suit underneath like that. And that can be an easy way to break it down. I'm going quite fast again. Please remember that. We only have an hour here. So I want to get through as much of this as I can to show you like a nice fully inked drawing at the end. And I would never approach this this fast when I'm actually drawing my comics. You know, I practiced drawing this pose already today so I'm quite familiar with how it actually works and I've figured out you know all the difficult decisions that I have to go through like the star for example I took a little while to figure out you know how the star would curve around the chest like this because I've that figured out already it makes it easier to draw it on it like that okay but here's a little tip. This is a digital only tip for when you're working on a star and when you're fitting something like this to a character. So I'm gonna erase this. So first off, when you're drawing a star, think of it in the same way that you're writing the letter as well. It has form, there are certain rules that it has to follow. And the rule of a star is, is that you wouldn't actually draw a star like this with one continuous line. It's a lot easier if you draw through the star with these five straight lines, okay? And you want to keep each of these five triangles the exact same shape. That's the way you want to end up with. So here we have a star, but it's in the wrong perspective because our Captain America is turned slightly to the side. So when I bring that up on top of his chest like this, it's incorrect. But when you're working digitally with Clip Studio or Photoshop or anything like that, which a lot of us will use, there's a nice little piece of tech that you can use that's called, if I can find it, mesh transformation, okay? So I can bend pieces of my straight star to line up with how I think it should be on his figure, like that. 
okay boom handy little trick so you have to draw it straight on and then you can apply it to them almost like pasting it on top of this figure all right some more costume details some tubing around the arm to separate the blue and the white same here we're going to have a belt down here. Let's just start with just the simple belt part that goes around. Whenever you're drawing belts, there should be just below or right on the belly button. People often draw them a little bit too low. So make sure you keep those belts up because essentially they're above your pants. They're not really meant to be part of your pants when you're actually drawing something. The red and white lines like this for part of the American flag, of course. Let's not forget his kick, his really cool gloves, <laughs> like this. Okay, tips for drawing, how did, I, how did I develop my own style? Sorry, I've been in a, a way in a world of my own and I've forgotten about the questions. You know what, drawing your own style, it's something that really just starts to happen naturally. I would have, you know, I would have looked at all of my favorite comic book artists when I was learning and I would have drawn, I, would have, I thought I wanted to draw like them when I, when I was figuring things out. I would have seen their pages. I remember having some X-Men comics and I was redrawing all of the pages. It was those cool stories with Bishop and the Shi'ar and the X-Men in space. They were awesome. They were bombastic. And I, was, I actually have a, a page at home, which I technically is my first comic book page that I tried, where I redrew line for line one of the Joe Madureira pages that were on that. It was just, you know, it's, it's, it's essential for learning when you're starting out, but eventually you'll start to move away from the, like, directly copying artists and you'll move into your own style then eventually. And really what that is, is it initially is an amalgamation of all of the styles that you like, because it's not just going to be one artist that you like, it's going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, and the list keeps on going. And you learn, you don't come up with things necessarily by yourself unless you're a real art prodigy. You're going to be figuring things out by looking and admiring artists, seeing the techniques that they do, taking those techniques and learning how they do them, not necessarily taking them exact, but you break down how they do them and then you can apply them to your art. And the little bits that you like will shine through. The little bits that you don't like the way that they draw things, you'll drop them. It goes around to loads of different artists, and eventually your own style starts to emerge. And weirdly enough, you're gonna see this after everyone else. You know, you'll probably be the last person to see your own style. But yet at the same time, if I open up a comic book and I look at a page, I know exactly who draws it straight away. It's it's one of my it's one of my absolute favorite things about comics that like everyone, you know, has such a unique style to them. Uh, but it, it naturally comes. So just keep on drawing. Keep on practicing. I know I'll be blue in the face saying this, and I know you'll have heard it before, but there is really no better advice. The more you draw, the more your own natural style will come out, and the more you'll be, you know, you'll be able to do things by yourself and not necessarily doing it exactly like the way one artist does it. Okay, tips for drawing hands. Yeah, I guess I glossed over these pretty quick. Okay, so everything that you draw, if you find it difficult to do, you should break it down into very, very simple shapes. And that's exactly what I did with the hands here. So I'll break the hands down into a square for the palm. We have a rectangle for the index finger. Let's draw a thicker rectangle for the middle ring finger and pinky finger. And then a little ball here for where the thumb is right there, sorry, right there. And then let's put our little, our little cylinder out towards like this. And there you go. If those are the simple shapes that I'll break it down in step one. So step two, you know, I lightly erase what I have, I draw over it and I can break down the individual parts of the fingers then. Actually a nice little tip, one that a lot of people don't talk about is when you naturally move your hands, it's quite likely for your middle finger and your ring finger to stick together. So when you're drawing hands, try and keep those together a little bit more than you normally would do. It can always look quite good. Of course, I should have my middle finger bigger than my index finger. And then, you know, you've got hands right in front of you. Look at them, you know, I'm looking at this hand now. So I'm seeing how the thumb breaks down like that. And like, that's where I usually, that's what I usually do to find those little lines that are on the pans. And there we go. The key always is to find the simple shapes, break it down into those simple shapes and build it up from there. And then 
once you've figured out what those shapes are, it's all about practice, practice, practice. You know, if you find something in particular difficult, whether it's hands, boots, belt buckles, believe me, belt pouches, things like that, they're all very, very difficult to draw. The real key to getting better at them is practice, practice, practice. You know, buy a little sketchbook, fill it up with just hands, and I guarantee you'll be better at drawing hands afterwards. Speaking of, let's erase that hand so we can move on. Okay, so this, here we go. So this is essentially my pencil there. So all of this is gonna be erased, but I know where the inks can go, so now I'm gonna draw over this. So if you remember when we drew Iron Man the last time, we're gonna keep the light source in the same place. So our light source is up here, and we'll bear that in mind when we're inking. Okay, so it's coming down in this direction, so that's where our shadows come from. Last week we had a really shiny metallic surface, of course, in Iron Man's armor. This time it's obviously not that, but there's some nice little textures on the top of Captain America's uh, outfit that we can really draw into and really do some nice stuff with. So I'm going to erase this because I don't want it to distract too much from what I'm drawing. So you can just about see it here. And now it's time to start inking. So this is the fun part. So what have we got? We're doing brilliant for time. So 20 more minutes to ink Captain America. No problem. Okay, so remember, I would never, ever, ever do it that fast when I'm working in comics. We've got a nice little hour class here, so I want to get through as much as I can here. So this is kind of a bit of speed inking. So drawing eyes, little nice trick for drawing eyes. So we obviously have our pupil and our iris, but the eyes, the are they, the iris reflects less light than you think. So I often put a big shadow on top of the eyes like this. They're darker than, than they're often drawn. And then I'll go back in and I'll put my nice little highlights on them there. And there you go, they're nice. They're reflective because eyes, the surface of an eye, of course, is wet. Uh, so you wanna have those more reflections on there than you would have on the skin. Okay, so look at this. I know where everything is. This is, this is quite cathartic, this part. It's all about those nice little line weights. It's all about those nice little shadows. Hopefully I can get through and show you a bunch of line weights on this drawing now as well, okay? So, more questions. So, is it essentially become, does it essentially become muscle memory to the point where you can draw without second guessing yourself? I would say, you know, we, I think you should always second guess yourself in a good way, in a critical way. You always want to learn and you always want to improve. Now, of course, there are certain things that you just get better and better at drawing the more and more you draw them. Like I often find when I'm working in a, on a character in a series that the more I draw them, the more familiar I become with them. You know, I worked on Spider-Man 2099 for 50 issues, 49 issues, something crazy like that. So, you know, I got quite good at drawing him from memory, if that makes sense. Like there was less need for reference and the, how the costume worked, things like that. But at the same time, I wanted to be pushing myself. I wanted to draw more. I wanted to, to learn more while I was drawing these things. And yeah, it's, it's, it's always important to keep on thinking about learning. Like that's the definition of an artist. An artist isn't just someone that draws. An artist is someone who's constantly practicing in order to get better at their craft. So, it's how you grow, it's how you improve. And like I said, art is really cool because you never master it. There's always something to learn, so it's always challenging. I'm never ever bored when I'm working on a page. There's always stuff in there that's a challenge. And if it wasn't a challenge, then that just means that I need to push myself a little bit more. Okay, we have a nice little close up of inking the face here. So, line weights. So, Line weights are an important way of showing depth and form. We have the light coming from this direction. So I wanna have the lines thicker away from the light than I do when they're closer to it. We did the same thing in Iron Man. We really went into depth in that if you wanna check out that on last week's YouTube video. That's the cool thing about doing these YouTube videos. You know, these classes are around forever. So, I was joking with my friends, you'll be able to see my hair go longer and longer while I can't get a haircut. 
on all of these streams. What were the most inspiring comics for me to read when I was growing up? Ooh, good question. Hmm, I need to think about this one. Growing up, funnily enough, I was the same, pretty much the same age as Ultimate Peter Parker. So I always felt like, like I've got such an attachment to those comics because of that. And like, I felt like I was learning alongside Peter when I was reading them. And I adore Mark Bagley's art as well. So a lot of the pages that I was trying to draw, that I was trying to learn how to draw from, they would have been straight out of that book. So it definitely was one of the most inspiring ones. That Joe Madeira X-Men run that I mentioned earlier. It was just like nothing I'd ever seen before. It was actually one of the things that I had in front of me. And I was like, wow, you know, I want to be able to, to draw comics someday. So yeah, that one's pretty amazing. Okay, let's add in some shade. It's away from the light source. So the shade is coming in this direction. And so I guess, you know, me primarily as an artist, I'll follow books for the art. And like, it's really, really nice that, you know, a lot of the artists that I follow and I really, really like their stuff, you know, now they've become quite good friends. Like I was just reading uh, Conan the Barbarian by Mahmoud Azrar quite recently. And he's a good pal of mine. And it's just, you know, I get so inspired by seeing my friends who are constantly improving with their work too and then this is the game of comics you know so they're improving so it pushes me to improve and that's there's nothing more inspiring than that to me is seeing a person's art improve and i feel that in the same way for people who aren't professional artists as well like i get shown a lot of portfolios at conventions and signings and things like that and i'll often have people that come back to me and show me their portfolio over and over again and there is nothing nicer than seeing somebody improve you know if you haven't seen them over the course of a year and they show you some new pages and they're better and it's just a really really lovely feeling that seeing you know you know this person has put in so much work you've been through that yourself so you completely understand you know the commitment that it takes to do this so it's a lovely lovely feeling that's it. It's, it's all about improvement. What inspires you to get better at drawing comics? So, okay, what equipment am I using? So I am drawing on a Cintiq, it's called. It's basically a tablet with a display. Now, I will always stress this. You know, it's the same thing at the end of the day. You can get the same result working on pen and paper. I shifted over to digital art way back in 2008. I was probably one of the first people ever to get one of these displays simply because I, w I actually moved. I moved from Ireland to Toronto for a little while. I had an amazing year there, but I was working in comics and to work digitally, you know, your pages are 11 by 17. So not only do you need these really big pages, but you need an 11 by 17 scanner. So that wasn't a lot logistical for me to travel over to Canada with. So I remember my first day over there, they just brought out that, you know, the first one of the first kind of proper digital screens. And I obviously was taking a gamble doing this, but I committed to learning it very, very fast. I took it straight away. I really, really enjoy it. You know, there, there are a couple of little things that you can do digitally that you can't do traditionally, which I, I'll stress this again, you know, they're not things that help you learn. But what they are is, you know, they're little time savers. So perfect example is this here. So I'm going to fill in this area of shade instead of like coloring it in, you know, bit by bit like this, you know, I switched to my fill tool and boom, there you go. It has filled up like that. So, okay, what questions, what else have we got? Most inspiring comments, got that one, what equipment? How do you know what the line width should be in the given area? Okay, so first things first so the light is coming from this direction so i want the line on this side of the figure 
to be thicker than the ones facing the light like this. So that's the first part, is to do with light and shade. It's a second level of shading, apart from blocking in, like I'm doing here, these areas of black, okay? So we can show shade, light and shade, by the thickness and thinness of your line. The way that I'm achieving the thickness and the thinness of the line is I'm pressing down harder on the pen that I'm using. So with the same pen here, if I do a light little line like this and a thick little line like that, so thin to thick by how I'm pressing on it. And that's what you, you wanna get that nice little flow, thin to thick, thin to thick, depending on where the light and the shade is. The second part then is contrast. So when you look at a landscape painting, I actually only came up with this example last week. Uh, for some reason, it popped into my head, but it's so true. When you look at a uh, when you look at a landscape painting, if you see mountains going back in the difference, you know we all know that trick that the mountains going way back into the difference they look more opaque, they're less visible than the ones in the foreground, and that's because of contrast and what's closer to you. The colors pop more than they would when they're further away. And that's essentially what we can do with line weight as well. So if I have Captain America here in the foreground and I've got this little dude here, there you go, in the background, because Cap has a thicker outline than this guy here, then he pops out more he's easier to see he's in the foreground he the contrast between him and the figure in the background is shown by the thickness of the line so you stick the two of them together and those are all the reasons that you need okay all right let's try to power through here and get much more of this drawn funnily enough so it might seem like it's easier to draw iron man but there ends up being more things to draw when you're drawing Captain America because a lot of the blocks of shapes that you have with Iron Man, well, that's essentially what they are. They're big chunks of armor with nice flat planes so there's not too much detail on there. So I'm gonna fly through this line art here. I'll keep answering questions, of course, but I wanna show you a few little techniques when I get to them then as well, okay? I've worked out a few beforehand. Okay, first off, this one, okay. So this is the blue area of the costume here. So blue is a dark enough color, so we wanna show more shade than light. This is, these are red here, these are white, okay. So in the red areas, dark enough color as well, same level of darkness as we would have in this blue. So we're gonna show the same level of shadow on the red part like this. So let's fill those in. Nice and quick, there you go. Whereas on the white parts of the costume, you know, there's not going to be as dark a shade because it's a much lighter color. So we don't show the shade as much as we should on the, the red areas. So again, it's contrast between those two colors. Oops, little mistake. There we go. All right, these are the fastest drawn pouches I've ever done. Okay, so here then, Cap has a little part of his costumes, costume, which are a different texture on the legs than the lower part of the legs. So we're going to do that. It's got, it's not as tight to him, so it has more folds. So let's just indicate those folds by catching the shadow of them like this. Let's fill it in. So there you go. So it's quite textured, not as tight to them, which is different to the legs like this, all right? And where on these legs, they still, of course, show some shadow, but much smoother, no real folds on this part of the leg, okay? So let's fill that in with black. We're doing good for time, actually. That's great. Again, remember, I can't stress this enough because I often hear this when I'm doing tutorials because they are so fast. Don't be frustrated if, if you're trying to draw along. That's 
absolutely awesome. I love to hear that. Or you're try- if you're going to go back and draw this again later, you are not expected to draw this at this pace. You know, I'm all about, you know, demystifying what we do. You know, I want to be able to help you learn. So I want to show as many techniques as I can in this hour. And the cool feature by doing these online, you know, there's going to be a YouTube video of this afterwards. So you can go back, you can click the little settings button and you can play me back at whatever speed you want. So if you're super, super fast, you can speed me up if you want. Or you can slow me down, get that crazy sounding voice that a slow down effect does. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do is we have most of this blocked out and I can start tidying it up then towards the end. And that's another important part, especially when you're working digitally is going back over your piece, making sure your line weights are nice and you know they're consistent. Let's let's we'll go through it together and we'll analyze, you know, where should I thicken the line? Where should I thin the line? Is that shadow correct? Is it not correct? Spending the time to make sure that you got your figure looking correct. It's really worth it because you know this thing will go off to print and it'll be in print forever and you'll see it for the rest of your life. So giving it that extra little bit of time is always good. Okay, so nice little shadow tip here. So we have the light coming from here. It would obviously hit this part of the figure here, but the arm is in front of it. So it's gonna cast a little shadow. So we can just fill that in like that, okay? So I wanna add more shadows to this side of the figure like this. Again, I'm doing this much quicker than I normally would. All right, we're getting there. Fully drawn Captain America. Awesome. More questions. <clears throat> Did I read how to draw the Marvel way? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, in fact, I still do. Uh, I have a brilliant editor in Mark Panicia who constantly pushes my art. And I love that relationship that I have with them because of that. And one of the awesome bits of advice that Mark has is that you've never learned too much to go back and take a nice uh, look over how to read comics, how to draw comics to Marvel way. They have some absolute gold points in there, mostly relating to storytelling. So what we've got here is I'm just drawing a picture of Captain America, of course, but the real skill of a comic book artist is telling a story because that's what we're doing we're taking you into our world we want you to get the mood of the story across as best as you can and when me as an artist when i get m that script it's fully in my hands you know essentially i'm uh, you're the you're the writer director you're everything when you have that script and it's it's up to you to show it in the best possible way so if it's a sad scene you know, you're gonna draw that much more differently than a, than a happy scene, things like that. You know, things are, can be more dramatic than others. Things can be, you know, you wanna establish a scene in the right way. You wanna set the mood. And How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way has some excellent advice and things like that. And just also how to take your drawings just from, you know, standard drawings to really give them that, you know, superhero Marvel feel, which is very, very important as well. Okay, so we're looking good. We have got, you know, nice little drawing of Cap here. So for our last little bit of time, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start tidying this up here now and adding some nice little textures so I can get rid of the red and the blue layers. I can get rid of that sun. We know where the light is coming from. Ah, it's been a different layer. There you go. Now, so let's start adding in some cool little details. So Captain America's costume, the texture of the upper chest and the shoulders is quite different to the rest of it, essentially what we've got here are, is a pattern like this, which wraps around the form. Like so, okay? This is super iconic. He's had it for a long, long time. Okay, but as a comic book artist, 
you don't necessarily have to show all of that you know it's going to take you forever to draw this all over the costume all over the shoulders like this all right and remember you're drawing cap in most of the panels of your avengers comic or your captain america comic so i'm going to indicate it by showing some shade that these shapes will cast so again our lights coming from this direction I'm going to pick up the parts like this just to show where the shade is okay so just bring down the blue just to show that a little bit more so just the hint of your texture and our human brain will kind of fill all the rest of that in and it can look nicer it can look more pleasing on the eye you don't have to draw everything. Sometimes there's a real skill in how you emit different parts, okay? Okay, we're nearing the end here. Don't forget, I'm gonna be drawing on Marvel's Instagram. I'm gonna be drawing another picture, picture of Cap if you wanna tune into there. So make sure you're following Marvel on Instagram. And we'll do some more. We'll do more a closer up picture of Cap for that one so I can really focus on the details of the face and things like that. Let's start adding in more details, okay? I talked last week about chamfering. It's a nice little tip. It can apply to felt costumes as well. Whatever texture the costume is, just a little bit of an indication of the edge of it like that with a nice thin line can be enough. I like to use some nice thin lines as well to start indicating where some of the facial details are. So, you know, it's not too heavy. There won't be too many lines on the face. But I still can show some definition by doing this. Okay, let's give him a strong chin. Let's add in some more lines for the top of the mask like this. Now again, this is a lot looser, I guess would be the right word for what I do when I'm doing the comics. I would probably double the amount of time that I'm doing this if I was doing a panel like this. But it's perfect for today, okay? And look, I just wanna say thanks again to everyone that's been sending in the questions. I keep saying this like art comic book art is an awesome community i was helped so much when i was breaking in because i by showing my art to other people but to other comic book artists and they always offered me help and that's kind of been a way of the industry let's add some piping to the fingers like this it's always been a it's always been a part of the industry which is really really nice so feel free to hit up you know ask ask any comic book artists that you you admire on twitter you know if you want i have some questions especially if they're questions about drawing because we all went through the same thing when we were trying to break in uh, and i've got a nice rare name will sliney so i'm easy to find and it was awesome the amount of iron man art that was sent my way uh, over the last week was just so cool so cool to see people doing these tutorials from all around the world that's always really really nice all right we are getting there okay so Speaking of line weights, and speaking of contrasts and things like that, I'm going to give him a thicker line now on the outside just to make sure that if we, because of course when we were working in comics, we would, you know, often have a quite detailed background there behind him. So this is when I can kind of zoom in and really kind of work on those thicker lines around the, the outline of our character to help him pop a little bit more from what's in the background to provide contrast with those background images. So 
Same with the fists. The fist here, I want it to pop out a little bit more from the figure. So make sure it's got a thicker line here. Yeah. It's actually quite an enjoyable stage when you're doing this. I would highly recommend it. And kind of marks the, the ending of the figure as well that you've drawn to. It's one of the last things that I do. Because you're going to need to see, like I'd often wait until I have all the other characters around them as well. And because you're going to need to see which ones need to be more, which ones need to pop out a little bit more than the others, of course. And his shield, I would love, you could do, trust me, you could do a full tutorial on drawing Captain America's shield. It is difficult, so don't be afraid to use reference to like study the shape that it is. You know, obviously it's, it's a cylindrical shape, but drawing that in perspective, you have a lot of mathematical things to figure out to get that right. So a lot more difficult than you think. I really could spend an hour on that then as well. So. Does digital drawing help improve pencil on paper skills as well? So the simple answer to that is any drawing helps any type of drawing. It's all about practice, 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 practice. I know it might be a little bit boring me saying that over again, but it really is. So it doesn't matter what way you're doing it. Now, I've often said this before, it can, it can be a little jarring when you move from one to the other, like see me here because I'm used to digital. I've got my finger on a, a wheel here that zooms in and out. So I'm zooming in and out the whole time. Uh, and it takes a little while actually when you're working digitally to to understand, to not work on the details too zoomed in, to have the frame of reference of your page. I often have that in another window that's over to the side. But improving a drawing is just about drawing. If you, you know, if you go down to an area where there's loads of rocks and you get one rock and you scroll against another rock and you're practicing your drawing, you'll improve your drawing, you know, as long as you're focused on something to learn. So like we talked about earlier, we had someone that, you know, wanted to learn how to get better at hands. So if, I don't care how they do it, just as long as they're drawing, they will get better at it. So it's all about that focus learning. I want to learn how to practice drawing hands. Okay, so there we go. We've got our nice picture of Captain America here. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. It's been awesome. You know, my name is Will Sliney. I do tons of tutorials like this on YouTube on the, the whole time on my own channel. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all those things as well. I have a nice rare name, so I'm easy to find. And be sure to check us out on Instagram. We'll be doing another Captain America tutorial there really soon too. So thank you everyone for tuning in and goodbye and stay safe everyone.